Do I look different today? I have my glasses on, but it's Miss Cat, and I have another mystery animal and recipe to share with you today. Now, I know I have all ages and stages of readers and cooks, so I want to talk for just a second about the first animal clue, which of course is the beginning sound of the animal name. Okay. The beginning sound for this mystery animal is b, b. Can you make that sound? B. See my lips when I make the sound? B. Okay, I can even feel in my throat, it feels like a B is buzzing when I make the B sound. Some sounds make our throats vibrate when we make them. B. All right, enough about the first sound. I am gonna let you know that this is a breakfast recipe. There's that sound again. And it only requires three ingredients. All right, here's my three ingredients. One, two, three. And you know what else? two of these ingredients start with that b sound. Okay, listen and see. I have bread, eggs, and butter. Did you hear b in those? I hear it at the beginning of bread and butter. And those of you who have learned what letters make sounds, you may have noticed the letter B in butter. All right, let's see how these three ingredients, plus salt and pepper, come together to make breakfast. Here's the kitchen equipment you're gonna need to make this breakfast recipe. All right, so you've got to have a muffin tin, okay? And you gotta have a butter knife. Now, these other two things, the rolling pin and the little bowl, are optional. That means you have a choice. The rolling pin I am going to use to flatten the bread. You can also just use really clean fingers. And I'm gonna use this little bowl to put my egg in before I pour it in here. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So. If you don't have these, I am sure you will find a way to improvise. You know what that word means? I like to improvise in the kitchen. Sometimes when you improvise, it's because you just have to wing it and make things work with what you have. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the crust off of my bread. So I've got a butter knife and I'm just going to cut right along the very, very edge of the bread. Okay. Oops. I missed some. Let's do it from this side. All right. That looks pretty good. Just keep going until I've taken all the crust off. All right, so here I have a piece of crustless bread. This is what I want. Now, you can use very clean fingers for the next part. Or if you have a rolling pin, you can use it to flatten the bread. Make it as flat as possible. Then you can either use melted butter or softened butter or a butter spread, which I am using. And we're going to just spread a thin layer that means it's just not all glopped up on there. You just a really thin layer of butter on the bread. 
Then I'm going to cut this square ish shape into two triangles by going through it like that. Okay. So now one piece of bread, it's two thin buttered triangles. And here is where our muffin tin comes in. So we are going to make little nests in the muffin tin. Okay, now this is going to take a little doing, a little playing with it to get it the way you want it. So make sure you've got clean fingers. But I fit one piece in like that, and then I'm going to kind of overlap the bottoms and see how it makes a little cup. Or like I said before, a little nest. So I have my little bread nests ready to go into a 375 degree oven for about five minutes. You can make as many or as little as you want of these. It's just one piece of bread per egg. All right, so we're going to put these in for five minutes until they firm up. I've pulled my little toast nests out of the oven for just a minute so we can add the egg. Now I recommend taking a small bowl or a measuring cup or something and cracking your egg into that and then pouring it into the toast cup, okay? Just makes it a little easier than trying to crack an egg and then open it up over the toast. So I'm gonna fill each little nest with an egg and then we're gonna put this back in the oven for about 18 minutes. Okay, I pulled my toast cups out of the oven. And now I am gonna take one out to eat it. Now, you will need an adult because the pan will still be hot. So you've got to be very careful, but see how that stayed together, how neat that is? That toast really formed a little cup, a little nest to hold the egg. And now all it needs is a little salt, a little pepper. That's just what I like. And ta-da! Breakfast is served. Well, did you guess the mystery animal? <laughs> I bet you did. It wasn't quite as tricky as some of the other animals we've done, but yes, today's animal is a bird. <laughs> and more specifically, a wren. A wren is just a kind of bird you probably have in your backyard if you've got one. And I had a wren family build their nest in my mailbox a couple of months ago and it was really neat to watch them gathering materials and I thought we should read The Nest That Wren Built by Randy Sonenshine and published by Candlewick Press. These are the twigs dried in the sun that Papa collected one by one to cradle the nest that Wren built. This is the bark, snippets of twine, spidery rootlets, and needles of pine that shape the nest that Wren built. These are the leaves of ruby and gold fallen from trees sturdy and old that weave through the nest that Wren built. This is the sack, silky and white, brimming with spiders who feast on the mites that threaten the nest that Wren built. This is the snakeskin warding off harm, a scaly and thin reptilian charm draped on the nest that Wren built.
This is the moss, softer than suede, stolen from stones cool in the shade, to line the nest that Wren built. These are the feathers, petals, and thread placed on the moss to soften the bed that waits in the nest that Wren built. This is the tuft of rabbity fur plucked from a shark persnickety burr to warm the nest that Wren built. This is the pop-up perching nearby, chirping a mirthful song to the sky and guarding the nest that Wren built. These are the eggs laid on the bed of velvety moss, feathers, and thread safe in the nest that Wren built. These are the hatchlings scratching within, stretching and pecking, all scrawny and thin, that hatch in the nest that Wren built. This is Papa hunting for food, a spider or beetle to nourish the brood that waits in the nest that Wren built. These are the nestlings, drowsy and fed, snuggly and plump on their feathery bed, warm in the nest that Wren built. These are the fledglings, 14 days old. They inch to the edge while feathers unfold. <sighs> then to fly from the nest that Wren built. <laughs> the end. I love that. And this book is really neat because at the back it has a, a glossary with words that are in the book that you may have thought, what does that mean? And then it even has Wren facts. So I highly recommend The Nest That Wren Built. So really neat illustrations if you take time to really look at them. And I love birds, so <laughs> that was definitely a winner for me. Now, I like wrens. I also really like robins. And this book is called Look Inside a Robin's Nest by Megan Cooley Peterson. And it's a nonfiction, and it has photographs. And I have seen this exact thing in my yard of robin with a mouthful of straw looking stuff, getting ready to make a nest. But robins have a different type of nest than the wren, and that's one of the neat things about birds is the robin, for instance, makes theirs with all those twigs and stuff, but also with mud. And then the mud dries and it's hard and it makes a really nice sturdy home. So it's a really cool book, really simple, large text and tells all about Robin's Nest. <laughs> and then another one that tells about the different types of nests that birds make is called Birds Make Nests by Michael Garland. <laughs> and the title pretty much says it all. It tells you about different ones and different kinds of nests. Some nests are high, some nests are low. See all these different types of birds? in different types of nests that they make. Some are high, some are low. And it doesn't have photographs, but it's got some pretty neat illustrations. All right, that is all the time I have for today. So I'll see you next time.